We love designing products. You know what? We even love designing brands. I mean, take a close look at these and try and imagine how much we actually spend designing them. I mean, it's quite a shock, actually. I mean, you've got to love Twitter. I mean, the power of clip art. But seriously, we spend a lot of money on these things, products, brands. But how often do we actually design companies? It's amazing. We have 21st century ideas about business, but even to this day, we shoehorn them into structures that came from the 19th century. If you think about it, you know, so much of management, of the way we organize ourselves and work, came from the Industrial Revolution. It was all about control and treating people in a factory to get the most out of them. So we invented departments like human resources, sales and marketing, IT. That was phase one. Not so long ago, we moved into phase two, where we figured out that we could take those departments and we could move them elsewhere. So we could offshore entire business processes to places like India or the Philippines. Someone once described this to me as, your mess for less. This really wasn't innovation. It was just shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic. It's only been in the last 18 months or so that something very new has happened in the world of business which is those departments have not just been offshored, they're moving onto platforms. So they're moving onto people who, like companies like Salesforce, that just specialize in sales and marketing. They're not just doing a single instance or a customized IT built, they're doing it for thousands of industries, which means they can get levels of innovation that IT vendors never were able to in the past. There's a new land grab across almost every department of the enterprise, from finance and legal, HR, sales and marketing, IT. What's really interesting, and this is tough for a lot of IT vendors, is that the actual companies and platforms are integrating among themselves now. So they're actually joining in the cloud. Now, there's a few consequences of this. The first thing is, is that IT departments have to change. They're upgrading their DNA. You're seeing people who had come from the world of business administration, not from you know, network administration moving into leadership um, areas. The role of jobs in the enterprise is going to change. You know what? Accountants may even get less boring. You know? Because in the past, you might have had a team of people in accounts receivable making calls, chasing up um, bills and invoices. That's all going to go to software. The people left in, H in, um, in finance will be business strategists. But there's another very important consequence. And I've written this in very small writing because it's probably the most terrifying thing I'm going to say, which is the virtualization of everything. We saw it in the data center, which you know, first uh, virtualized its hardware, and now with new advances, is going to move right to the edge of the network. You've seen this in networks themselves, going from IP networks you know, to now software-defined networks. But you're going to see it in business as the basic building box of process and platforms become virtualized. Which leads us to the most important question of the 21st century, which is what is the company? And importantly, how do we design a good one? How many of us have been told that we would be meeting less physically and traveling less because of these new virtual technologies? You've all heard that, right? What's happening? We're meeting more than ever. We're on planes more than ever. What happened? And I think it actually has got to do with an old theory from economics from the 19th century. It's called Jarvin's Paradox. And what this idea was, was simple. So around uh, the 19th century, we suddenly got better at the way we made steam engines. They, they got a lot more efficient. So everyone predicted we'd be using less coal. Actually, we started using more coal than ever. In fact, the use of coal in steam engines moved into all these other industries that never existed before and ended up powering the Industrial Revolution. So Jarvin's paradox says sometimes the technology which is actually designed to decrease the use of something increases it. The same thing, I believe, is happening in communications. You are now more connected than ever before. You know more people on LinkedIn and Facebook than you would have five years ago. You can keep in touch with them now more because of Skype and mobile phones. So what that's done is actually increased both the need and the desire to physically connect. So networking is actually embedded in your DNA. And more than that, it's going to be embedded into the DNA of the 21st century company. There's no aspect of business today which shouldn't be challenged. Terry Breton, the CEO of the French software company Atos, last year banned email at his company. Now think about that. 
What would happen if the CEO of your company banned email tomorrow? Who thinks they would have a great day? I think you'd have a great morning, wouldn't you? I mean, you get to the office, no email, fantastic. I'm going to read the newspaper. You know, I'm going to watch television. By about lunchtime, I think the paranoia would set in. You know, because suddenly you don't know what people are saying. I mean, you're not being CC'd on any of those emails anymore. Or my favourite, the BCC. <laughs> you know, that weapon of office politics. This was his point. How much time do we waste because of email? I mean, the worst people in your company use email as a weapon to advance themselves and to suck up to your boss. The best people, their conversations and projects are lost. So in his company, he said, okay, you've got three choices. You can pick up the phone, you can have a physical meeting, or you can use the new internal social network the company built for itself. Kind of like an internal Facebook. And this is the beginning of a big trend that you're going to see happening in this market as well, which is how do we leverage the same technology that you're so comfortable with, you know, engaging at a brand level, spying on your children. How do we use that same technology to actually work more effectively? Do you know what the number one reason that people to come back to work at Facebook is when they quit? It's got nothing to do with stock options. I spoke to someone at HR there and she said she was amazed. The number one reason people to come back to work at Facebook is because Facebook has an internal version of Facebook that only Facebook employees can use. It's what they do to run everything from remuneration to their collaboration projects. But the real problem is that when you leave the company, you get kicked off the network. So people miss their friends. They miss their private Facebook. They actually rejoin the company so they can get re-access to that network again. How different is that you know, from email uh, as a mechanism? But the bigger trend here is something more profound. Because those same networks that have transformed the way you engage consumers also have to transform the way we redesign the organization in the future. The CEO of Burberry calls this the social enterprise. They made a massive transformation in their company because what she wanted to do was to make sure that from the touch points of the customer right through to the factory floor was one network and that insights gained in either the retail store or gained on the factory floor are able to be interconnected and to move up to senior management effortlessly. This is what happens when you start to think about your business as a collection of networks that tie your people and customers and suppliers together.